Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Get it? Seven, eight, nine. Okay. Anyways, um, that was the best I could do. I already used my similarity joke, so I had to give you a random math one. So today we're still talking about similarity and we're going to look at some shapes besides triangles, but they're all related to triangles. And some of them might not even be similar triangles. But first of all, let's start with similar triangles. So for overlap triangles, we redrew the triangles and used whole sides to get proportions. That was what we did before. And I could do this. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually set up proportions for the parts that are labeled. So I did 2.3 to 4.28, 3.09 to 5.74. And for both of those, I got 0.54. So the two ratios that are equivalent are actually uh, these two, AD and DB, and AE and EC. DE over BC is not the same. So why is it, if remember, before we used holes, but I didn't use holes this time. DB is not part of a whole triangle. Remember, we would redraw ADE and ABC, which, by the way, I strongly recommend for most of your problems. Why was I able to get equivalent ratios with parts of a triangle when we had trouble with that before? Okay, so this comes from the triangle proportionality theorem. If a line parallel to the side of a triangle intersects the other two sides proportionally, then it divide, uh, it intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So let's take a look and see what's going on. I've got this triangle here. You can see it's actually the same one we were looking at before. And I've actually made it so you can adjust where D is on this triangle. Okay. And you can see even though these two numbers change here, they always match. So the red to the purple here always equals the red to the purple there. Well, why is that? Let me go ahead and show you the math behind the ratios. And I know that looks a little bit small. But basically, the way I calculated this triangle is I have an original length here. All right. And in fact, let me see if I can make it closer to, let's zoom out just a little bit, move this out of the way. Zoom out. I'm going to try and make this length a little closer to 10. Okay. 6. So it'll make it a little bit easier. That's really close to 10. Uh, that, that's pretty close to 10 right there. Okay. So when the scale factor is 0 0.6, you can see the 6 there. Why? Where's the 4 coming from? Well, there's about 4 left because this is about 10. Okay, all right, let me move that out of the way. Oops, excuse me. And um, I'm not going to worry about these two sides just yet. So there's the 4 and there's the 6. Actually, I can pr try and make that close to 10 too. So it's going to be kind of an isosceles triangle. Oh, it did better. Okay, so you can see that both of these are close to 10. The 4 doesn't come from the scale factor. Well, it sort of does. If I use 60% of the 10, how much is left? 40%. So you can see that in this equation right here. The scale factor times the original 10 over, in this case, whatever's left over, 1 minus the scale factor times the original 10. The originals are actually going to simplify so that you can see that these ratios are going to stay the same. It's going to be related more to my scale factor than my original size. So if I didn't have a pretty nice uh, length here, even though I'm changing AB, you can see that ratio is staying the same. I can change AC, and that ratio is staying the same. So it's always 1.5, because it has to do with how much of the fraction is up here and how much of the fraction is there. Now, the other thing I did is I looked at the ratio of these. The reason these don't work is because neither one of them has anything to do with that point 0.4 that we're doing on this particular problem. It's not 1 minus the scale factor. Here, it's just 1. This one comes from the scale factor, but that bottom one, it just comes from 1, and that's why we're getting different numbers down here. So you can see I'm going to go ahead and change the scale factor a little bit more, 0.35, 
and you're going to get a different answer on the ratios, and it's all coming from the scale factor right there. Okay, so in this example, we're going to find CE. So the cool thing that the theorem says is that this side is, uh, if I do proportions, I can actually do, um, let me change the ink color here for you. I can say the yellow is to the green on the left side as the yellow is to the green on the right side. One thing you want to do is you don't want to use this piece right here. Whatever's inside the triangle will not work if you're doing part to part ratios, okay? Again, if you're doing a part and this BD here is part of a triangle, it's never the whole length of a triangle then you're not going to use two whole ratios because that number on top that I scribbled through, that's the whole side of triangle ABC. This number I scribbled through, 26.25, that's a whole side of triangle ADE. So we don't use those. So I just set up a proportion of 13.5 to 20.25 equals 11 over X. All right, and now that we've got that, we can cross multiply, divide both sides by 13.5, and I get x equals 16.5. So for further reflection, when can you make proportions using just parts of the side instead of whole sides of the triangle? Well, basically when we had a triangle and we had a transversal that was parallel to the base. That's called the triangle proportionality theorem. And what would be the converse of the triangle uh, proportionality theorem? Triangle proportionality theorem says that if the, if the line is parallel to the base, it cuts the sides proportionally. So the converse, you just switch the order. If it cuts the sides proportionally, then that line must be parallel to the base.